Dan Ives just said we're entering the golden chapter for autonomous vehicles and robotics. Here come two massive Dan Ives clips. Check this out. Physical AI, it's really about autonomous robotics. I mean, this is now what I view as the consumer AI revolution starts in terms of physical AI. And I think what you saw with NVIDIA, they're laying out end-to-end -end platform on autonomous. We've talked about it. It's why we're so bullish on Tesla, given robotaxes and the autonomous sort of vision there. But this is, this is the next stage of AI, but it's all fueled by the godfather of AI, Jensen NVIDIA. Dan, one of the things I heard from uh, CES and NVIDIA, they launched this Alpha Mayo platform. Tell us what this is, because this gets a little scary for some people, I think. Yeah, I mean, like you could say it's reasoning or really AI meets autonomous. It's an end-to-end -end platform that NVIDIA is basically laying out as their answer for autonomous. It's really something that ultimately we better than the human driver. Right. And I view it as just like what Tesla is doing on robo taxis, just like what we're seeing on autonomous. NVIDIA is going to be a supplier from the chip perspective, but also they're going to play an end to end platform play as well. Dan, I know we, we kind of knew this CES was going to be all AI centric here. As you talk to investors, are you sensing any AI fatigue that maybe it's played out? or boy, it's hard to handle these valuations, or boy, their numbers are getting so big. What's the conversations you're having with clients about? Just the I mean, AI I theme. actually, yeah. Paul, I think when you, you know, the time we spent there with NVIDIA and Jensen and on the floor, you cannot come away thinking that there's an AI bubble. I mean, we're still in the early days of playing out because you see what's happening on embedded devices, on the chip releases, obviously some releases through AMD and others. And I think it's not fatigue. I think investors are starting to realize that this next stage of the AI revolution is now taking hold. Dan, uh, help me here with, as Paul mentioned, CES. Where do the smaller AI companies fit in? Are we going to, like perplexity, are we going to see M&A this year for all of these names like Claude and the rest that I don't understand? Are we going to yeah. see an AI roll-up? I think you're going to see a lot of acquisitions, strategic financial acquisitions in terms of tech. We talk about robotics. That's one of our favorite areas. Names like still serve robotics is a, is a good example. Look, and the reality is, is that it's an arms race that's playing out. It's going to be a lot of acquisitions, a lot of consolidation. And I think that's right. why it's just going to be year three of an eight to 10 year build out of the AI revolution. Right. NVIDIA's Alpha Mayo interesting name announcement actually validates everything tesla has been doing for years dan ives put it clearly physical ai is really about autonomous robotics and when dan talks about the competitive landscape he keeps coming back to two companies nvidia for chips and infrastructure and tesla for the actual product so nvidia drops this alpha mayo platform at ces and everyone freaks out oh no nvidia is coming for tesla's lunch they're building an end-to-end -end autonomous stack competition is finally coming and yeah i get why people reacted that way jensen on stage announcing a driving ai platform sounds scary if you're long tesla like i am but think about what actually happened nvidia spent years pushing lidar they spent years saying you need radar you need all these expensive sensors to make self-driving work and now they show up with alpha mayo which is primarily vision based they're essentially copying large amounts of tesla's approach Tesla committed to that approach back in 2019 when everyone said they were crazy, but Nvidia still isn't vision only like Tesla is. So Dan calls this the consumer AI revolution shifting to physical applications. And that framing matters. We spent the last two years talking about ChatGPT and software AI. The money has flowed to cloud compute and language models. Physical AI is different. Physical AI means robots in factories, cars driving themselves, machines operating in the real world. That's a much harder problem and a much bigger opportunity. What NVIDIA is doing is smart for their business. They sell chips. They want every car company to buy their hardware and software stack. But there's a difference between selling the picks and shovels and actually mining the gold. NVIDIA is the supplier. Tesla is building the mine. So Dan is bullish on the physical AI opportunity, but he's even more specific about what it means for Tesla's stock. And when he gets pushed by the skeptics and their concerns, 
His answer surprised me. Diane got confronted with their criticism, must promises things, and they usually get delivered late, or at least they often get delivered late, especially around FSD. The Robo Taxi fleet was supposed to be 500 cars in Austin by the end of the year, they're currently at somewhere around 50 to 80. So why should anyone trust Tesla's autonomous thesis? Tesla. Ooh, hmm? Okay. That's, so, a, so here I, I have I have it's, no I have no skin in this game. Okay, and I never have. I've I was short the stock years ago. Got my head handed to me. But my problem is I just don't trust Elon. I don't trust what he says. I mean, example. Hmm. He said a couple of conference calls ago that he was going to have 500 autonomous vehicles in Austin. Hmm. He's got 80. The basic business. The electronic vehicle business, that's not doing well yep. because the credit, all the, the, the government subsidies have mm. gone away. That's bad. Robotics is on the come. Mm -hmm. EV, you know, electronic vehicle, autonomous driving is on the come. Mm -hmm. It's all, to me, it's all hype. And and, and, and until I actually see that the, his robo taxis really work autonomously, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on the sidelines. You tell me what you think. So, look... And obviously, like, for me, you know, like knowing Musk, you know, from the early days and being such a believer in tech, there were so many times where, like, things, like, they were a year and a half late. 2018, like, you could argue, like, you know, they were on the verge of, like, a bankruptcy or pseudo-bankruptcy. My view is, like, Musk right now is is a wartime CEO. Like what he, does that mean? What that basically means is that he's so laser focused, almost like in a wartime, but wartime being the battle versus other attack and you know the competition, that he understands that this autonomous chapter, Robo Taxis, it's gonna be the most important chapter ever in Tesla's history. And to to your I understand the skepticism, but I believe we sit here a year from now you're in 30 cities. The geofence area significantly expands. You're basically at level four. Okay, so let me push back. Imagine that that does not happen. That that a year from now, or with an ever time frame that it's important, we're basically where we are today. Mm -hmm. What do you think then? Then that would be, I mean, that that's like a bare thesis. Like okay. that would be one that's like- That's the bare thesis. stock's like a whatever, sub $300 stock, if that happens. But I think it's six to 800 because they- Because you think it, it, it happens. Yeah. So oh, it's binary. That's it's my binary. target too. And, and Steve, I, I think the, the, the problem here is you lay out this very elegant reasoning, which may very well be true of why none of this stuff plays out, yet one problem, the chart looks great. Yeah. And it's probably, oh, the, the, best, looks probably the best chart of the Mac 7 yes. uh, uh, at this point. So if I'm going to kind of lean on narrative or lean on price action, I'm always going to choose price action. So the price action is encouraging me to be more imaginative about what could happen over the mm -hmm. next year or two years. And whether it's 600 or 800, uh, I'll take either. But I think the direction's higher. Just because of the way the chart looks. Yeah, it is it, it is emerging as the leader in, in Mac 7. And I would just add to your point, like when it comes to physical AI plays in the world, in my, there's NVIDIA and Tesla. Those are the two best physical AI. What do you mean AI. physical AI? What I'm saying, like, instead of like, when you talk about just traditional AI, like software, use cases, LLM, physical AI being like robotics, mm. auto, car. I'm talking about physical, actual AI. And you look at what everything like NVIDIA is going after, like the robotics. The look at Fanuc in Japan. That's an, What's I, mean, I don't even know what that is. Japanese What's, robotics. Yeah, okay. I mean, you want to see a pretty chart? Go look at a 20-year chart of Fanuc. Yep. Like, this is the real deal. Okay. Humanoid robotics in Japan and in China is ahead of where we are yeah. in the U.S. Tesla is a binary bet where the autonomous thesis either works, i.e. Robotaxis and Optimus, and if it doesn't, the stock could face a lot of pressure. Dan didn't sugarcoat it. He said, if a year from now we're basically where we are today, that would be a very bare thesis. And he thinks the stock would be sub $300. But he also said he thinks we get to six to eight hundred dollars if Tesla can execute. I appreciate that Dan acknowledges the skeptics here. He was confronted with legitimate concerns. Musk said 500 robot taxis in Austin and that they currently have way less than that. The EV business clearly isn't booming. You can't hide from that. And Optimus, it's still very early days. These are fair points and Dan didn't dismiss them. He just said he's betting on the other side of the trade. Dan Ives is saying Elon knows this is the most important period in Tesla's history and bar them going bankrupt, I definitely agree. The autonomous chapter either works or it doesn't. 
And when Musk is locked in on something historically, he tends to deliver late, usually yes, but he delivers. SpaceX was supposed to fail. Tesla was months away, maybe even weeks or days away from bankruptcy. But Elon Musk somehow pulls it off. What I find compelling is that the charts agree with Dan. Tesla is arguably in place for the strongest year out of all the Mag 7 right now. And there's an old saying in markets, when narrative and price action diverge, follow price action. The skeptics have logical arguments, but the stock keeps making higher highs. This usually means the market knows something the skeptics don't. Physical AI is going to be a massive theme in 2026. Dan thinks there are really only two pure plays for this. NVIDIA for the infrastructure layer and Tesla for the application layer. If you believe autonomous driving is happening in the next five years, you probably want to follow both closely, but Tesla is the one that actually deploys cars on the roads right now. NVIDIA is selling the tools, Tesla is building the infrastructure. If I could recommend one place to start learning AI, it would be the course I put together. It's clear, structured and designed for beginners who want to get genuinely knowledgeable on AI. You'll get lifetime access to all lessons, including future modules. We're thinking about adding a new module soon. And just a heads up, the price rises as more modules are added. So it's currently at the lowest price you'll see now. One of our clients started with zero audience. Now they're doing $100,000 months thanks to YouTube. And they're not alone. We've helped three businesses hit that level just by growing them a YouTube channel. Want to see how this could work for your business? Book a call with me below.